Well, I got some good news and I got some bad news. We'll start off with the bad news first. I've still got the crust ash. It's stronger and more raging than ever, and it ain't going anywhere, I don't think. I don't think. Uh, even more bad news, I still haven't gotten a haircut, uh, so there you go. But the good news is I decided to bring the Q&As back here on OTRS Central. It had been a while. I don't really know why I stopped doing them. I guess I just kind of lost interest in doing them. But the interest is back, so thanks to you guys. I took Twitter and tweeted your questions. Let's go ahead and get started with the Q&A then, shall we? All right, they call me YDG. Ask your thoughts on the Baltimore riots. All righty. It's very simple. There is a systemic problem in this country with the police going above what they are supposed to be. They are there to enforce the law, not be the law, or in a lot of cases be above the law. And it's getting ridiculous. It is a systemic problem, and it's not just a race problem. This is in general when talking about uh, the way uh, the police in the society as a whole, in this country as a whole, treat citizens. Now, disproportionately, it would affect blacks, and in particular, black males, young black males at that. I don't dispute that. But it goes beyond just a race issue. This type of treatment by the police, this type of actions by the police, this type of attitude by the police transcends race. It goes to gender. It goes to everything. It is a systemic problem. It is a serious and significant problem. Like I said, it does disproportionately affect blacks, and in particular black males and young black males at that. They don't call it DWB for nothing. I mean, I've even seen it for years all the time. I see somebody, I'm like, why are they even getting pulled over? I've even ridden with black friends that have gotten pulled over. I'm like, what the fuck are they getting pulled over for? And they're looking for this and this and that and everything goddamn else that if I was driving, they may or may not have looked for, but they still would conduct themselves in the same type of attitude. However, this whole rioting business is fucking ridiculous. We're trying to fight against racial profiling and stereotypes by acting up towards other stereotypes. How fucking stupid can people be? Should people be angry? You're goddamn right. Should people be pissed? You're goddamn right. Should people be sitting there and looting and robbing businesses and setting businesses of blaze that had absolutely nothing to do with the situation? No! Stop acting like fucking ignorant idiots, you jackasses! Have all these violent protests gotten anything accomplished? Have they done anything other than take the eye off of the ball of what should be the serious talking point? And that is why the fuck the police believe that they are not only the law, but they are above the law and they can do whatever the fuck they want. But instead you got this jackass sitting there throwing rocks and shit. These people throwing Molotov cocktails and tipping over fucking cars. And now you get the certain section of the media that likes to use this as a way to perpetuate stereotypes and manage to shift the blame away from the police and the system that we currently have and focus it back on the individuals because people are fucking stupid. Stop your damn riots. You want people to stop looking at you like fucking stereotypes and stop acting like it. You want people to take this core issue very seriously? Then start taking the issue seriously. And no rioting and setting things ablaze is not taking the issue fucking seriously. That's an excuse to act like a jackass. And not a very good excuse either. Fucking idiots. I don't give a shit. It doesn't solve anything. It doesn't help anything. Did it help in Ferguson? Fucking A going back in the day. Did it help with Rodney King? But yet every time something like this happens, and it seems to be like this is an issue. It's like an excuse for certain segments of idiots to act like complete fucking idiots. People should be pissed. They should be upset. They should protest. But when it gets to the point of where they start being violent and they start doing all this shit, it diverts the attention away from the topic that the focus should be on. It switches and changes the narrative and makes everything completely counterproductive. And that way, what happens? Absolutely nothing changes and all the shit stays the same, if not gets worse. But yeah, you got certain fucking idiots that think that anything gets helped. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right, let's go on. WWE 961. 
Uh, what's the greatest gimmick match concept of all time? Viagra on a pole match, damn it. Uh, Steven Waz, what do you think Kane's path is from now to WrestleMania 32? The <laughs> retirement. <laughs> Let's see here. Alta Mura Mark, where do you see the Damian Sandow gimmick now going on? <laughs> to main event. <laughs> Jobbing on SmackDown. Graham Burley, do you ever think WWE will hold a pay-per-view in the UK again? Yes, I do. Uh, it should be a WrestleMania, but I don't know that it's going to happen. Unfortunate. Guest 5, do you think WWE would benefit by having these one-off, one-hour shows like King of the Ring plus Raw going back to two hours? Um... To me, King of the Ring should be a pay-per-view, not just some one-hour WWE Network special. It always worked right in that June slot, I always thought. You know, it's a way to bridge the gap between WrestleMania and SummerSlam, in my opinion. Now, it's a little different, granted, I'm, I will say, because of Money in the Bank. But, you know, it would really work well in the current WWE schedule in May. You know, the post-Extreme Rules show, I think it would make a lot of sense. Uh, you know, and obviously, we benefit from going back to two hours. Uh, let's see here. One and only Billy J. Your thought on the random return to King of the Ring, but not being a pay-per-view. Will Barrett's win mean anything? Ah, uh, Barrett's win could mean a little bit of something, or it could mean absolutely fucking nothing at all. I mean, he's been around almost five years now, spinning their wheels with him. Uh, I like the fact that they brought King of the Ring back, but like I said before, instead of having payback in May, I would have rather that had been the King of the Ring pay-per-view. You know, you have it spaced out from WrestleMania... Uh, it's a little bit away from Money in the Bank and SummerSlam, so that's where I would have liked to have had it. Uh, Evan underscore Voorhees, how do you feel about Rollins losing his finishing curb stop move? What would be a better move to replace? I don't know about the better move to replace place it, but I don't particularly understand the logic behind banning the curb stop. I really don't. I mean, I understand what they're going to try and use as a reason. I just don't think it's a particularly good one. I mean, there are so many other moves that they utilize that if executed poorly could cause serious damage. So what makes the curve stop so remarkable or different in that particular case? I don't really get it. Duke THS, why are the Smarks bitching about Bad News Barrett winning King of the Ring? I thought they loved him. Is it because he beat Neville? I'm sure part of that is maybe because he beat Neville. Um, I don't know why they would be. I don't know why, frankly, they're caring all that much. You know, WWE did bring it back, but it was only a one-hour special on the network that was barely advertised, mentioned at the 11th hour, and thrown out randomly on a Tuesday night. So let's not take this shit too seriously. Um, you know, probably because they wanted Neville to win. I'm, I'm sure that's part of it, but, you know, it's just, just something to complain about, I guess. I.B. Spiffy. Should the WWE give Divas a chance by having a 20-minute match between Eva Marie and Rosa Mendes? <laughs> What the hell? Why not? <laughs> uh, String Maker 4. With the Booker T fuck up about Owen Hart, how did the WWE decide what complaints they're going to act upon? Based upon the whims of Vince McMahon and Vince McMahon alone, based off of the reaction from the public. Yeah, typical corporate bullshit. Jacob Castle 42. Can I have your thoughts on the Baltimore riots as an Australian? All we see is short clips of it on from Fox and CNN, etc. Oh, God. I hope you're not just getting it from clips from Fox and CNN and MSNBC. Oh, Christ. You can only imagine what non-Americans think about us watching American news. Holy shit. I mean, you got Fox News when the whole Adrian Peterson shit was going on. You got Sean Hannity trying to defend that shit. And, and there just was no defense. There only There's only one viewpoint to have about that particular instance. It was just wrong. Um... I've already given my thoughts on the Baltimore riots. Again, it's uh, ridiculous, um, it's unnecessary, it's uncalled for, and it's counterproductive. So, of course, that's why people fucking do it. Because we're humans and we're stupid and we don't learn from previous mistakes. Uh, Jacob Hassel42 also wants to men ask, you mentioned you watched Australian Rules Football. Which teams did you like? Would you consider watching again? I don't know that I ever really... Followed it that much to the point where I could, frankly, even remember teams. Here's what it used to be, is I would sit there and watch it on, it used to be Fox Sports World, at about 3 o'clock in the morning when I was fiending for sports, and that was about the only thing freaking on was that of rugby. So that would be about all that I would watch, and that was 15 years ago. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, what's it say? Slimmy Athman. I might need glasses. That's scary. Uh, why do you think Vince McMahon put Eric Bischoff in angles 
where he kissed both Linda and Stephanie. Maybe he likes um, Eric getting it on with his ladies in his life. I don't really know. That's a good question. I don't really know. Vince willing to do whatever it takes for the business. Uh, and how many of the WWE divas do you think Vince McMahon has given the corporate dong to? Probably not that many at this point. Probably none at all. Um, let's see here. The Den Sidron. Thoughts on the King of the Ring and Mayweather Pacquiao finally going down. I've talked about on Schlage Daddy TV all my thoughts about Mayweather and Pacquiao, even though I've got another video coming up about ESPN and Stephen A. Smith and their ridiculous uh, God-making of Floyd Mayweather. Um, you know, it's just a joke. And then uh, King of the Ring, I, like I said, it, it's it's cool that they brought it back, but I would rather it been the May pay-per-view instead of payback. Uh, CPZ27, what's your reaction to a John Cena versus Randy Orton match at WrestleMania 32 in the main event? Oh, splooge. Mostly splooge and jizz. God, that would be magnificent. John Cena versus Randy Orton. Of all the matches they ever fucking had, nobody in the WWE ever thought to maybe, just maybe, save that for a WrestleMania angle where they went one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, Austin and Rock wrestled at Mania three fucking times. Cena and Orton have never wrestled one-on-one -on -one at WrestleMania. It's just ridiculous. Rampager213 asks, What are your thoughts on the reported WrestleMania 17 match between Mike Tyson and Triple H? Um, I guess I, I could see where they would have been going with it with the whole DX shit, but to me it would have been a way for Triple H to try and say, See, I'm, a goody, I'm as good as Stone Cold. I'm as good as Stone Cold. Oh, Christ. I'm glad it didn't happen. And then, last question. What are your thoughts on Team Blitz calling you out on their video recently? Oh, I didn't know that they did. Um, I didn't know what, that they called me out. I didn't know that they said anything about me. I really don't care that much. I guess here's how I would put it. If it's something pertaining to Mayweather and Pacquiao, then I don't give a fuck because I feel right in what I've said because it has been ridiculous on so many different levels. It's five years too late and there's so many fucking problems with it. I'm not going to back off or apologize for that. Um, if it's something pertaining to not watching TNA... Uh, I really don't care. You know, it got to the point with TNA where I just didn't feel like I had anything good to say about it anymore. I just had no more interest, so I just didn't watch. You know, I'm not going to sit there and pay a premium price for the channel either. I'm not going to back off of that. If it's something pertaining to the WWE, I have to be honest. You know, I really don't care because I don't care that much about the WWE right now. So if it was something stupid I said, then I probably deserve to have them talk shit about it. If they're just being stupid, then, you know, so be it. I don't care. Um, if it's something pertaining to uh, bashing Brock Lesnar, you know, I feel vindicated in that to a certain degree. If it's, you know, something pertaining to me saying things about Daniel Bryan and people being wrong about wanting him to main event WrestleMania 31, well, look at where the fucking company would have been coming out of WrestleMania 31 if he would have main evented. In these type of situations... Uh, I when I don't know what was said or what was talked about or the context of it or anything like that, I have no real way to form an opinion one way or another. Um, I, I just really, at this point, don't care all that much. They can do their thing, and they do their thing very, very well. I give Bruce Woods a lot of credit. Once YouTube switched the algorithms of how they did things in terms of video discovery and viewership in 2012. He was a guy that was able to capitalize very well on other channels, myself included, never really caught on. You know, he sits there and we can make fun of him for doing two, two and a half, three hour videos. But one, obviously there's an audience there, so he's speaking to his audience. And two, most especially of all, YouTube's view algorithms being, in, being based off of uh, length of viewership. I could have a 30 minute video that everybody watched 100%, or he could have a three-hour video that everybody watched maybe 45 minutes to an hour of. Yeah, you watched my entire video, but you had more watch time with him, meaning more view time on YouTube with him, meaning that YouTube is going to promote him and push him more than they would me or somebody else. I don't begrudge him for that. He was there to take advantage of the situation and a change in YouTube's way of doing business, and he did a hell of a job with it. And he's backed that up with a website, something that, frankly, I haven't been smart enough to do. I've been too lazy to do and too stupid to do. He incorporated other people with the live streams. I mean, he's done a lot of good things. So I'm most certainly not going to hate on him, and I'm most certainly not going to hate on Team Blitz. They can do whatever the fuck they want. 
That's what most people really frankly expect me to give a fuck about it. Because at this point in time, I just really don't care. Thanks for your questions for this q and I'll see you later.